everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a deep dive into React Native 0.76. You know, I was checking out this blog post by some of the React Native devs over at Meta and, well, let me tell you, it's jam-packed. They managed to fit like a whole year's worth of improvements into one release. It's pretty amazing how this release really sets the stage for the future of React Native. We're not just talking about like small tweaks here and there. Yeah. This release is bringing some big changes that are going to impact how developers build mobile apps going forward. Totally. So our goal today is to break down all the awesome details, you know, explain the tech stuff in plain English, and hopefully figure out why this matters, even if you're not a coding whiz. Sound good? Sounds great. Okay, cool. So first up, something that's been in the works for quite a while now, the new architecture is finally enabled by default. Yeah, after six years of development.testing.refining, it's finally ready for everyone to use. This isn't just a quick fix either. It's a complete rewrite of React Native's core. Basically, they rebuilt it from the ground up to make native apps built with React even better. So it's not just about making things faster. It's about making things better, yeah. Think of it like this. Imagine React Native was already a powerful engine, right? Well, now they've swapped it out for a turbocharged version, smoother integration with native platforms, which means apps will look and feel more native. And, well, ultimately, that means a better experience for users. Okay, I see that. That's definitely a big win for both devs and users. But wait, there's more, right? This blog post mentions something about a whole new DevTools experience. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Debugging React Native apps has, well, kind of been a pain point. You know, you had to rely on tools that weren't specifically designed for the platform. But now we have the first stable version of React Native DevTools, and it's integrated right into Chrome DevTools. So if you're a web developer who already uses Chrome DevTools, yeah. you'll feel right at home. Exactly. But even if you're new to debugging, these tools are designed to be easy to use and super powerful. Imagine this. You're trying to find a bug. But instead of getting lost in a ton of confusing logs, you have clear visual cues that show you exactly where the problem is. No more drowning in a sea of logs. That's awesome. What other cool features are there? Well, the new DevTools also have faster component highlighting, a clear paused in debugger overlay, and a streamlined workflow that gets rid of all the unnecessary clutter. Debugging just got a whole lot easier. Okay, wow. This is starting to sound like a major upgrade, not just a small update. It is, yeah. And get this. Remember how building a React Native app sometimes felt like watching paint dry? Especially when you were making small changes throughout the day. Oh yeah, I remember those warm builds. They could really kill your productivity. Well, hold on to your hats. Because the Metro Resolver, which is basically the thing that figures out where all your code is and how it all fits together, yeah. just got a 15 XP boost. Whoa, wait. 15 times faster. So like, if a warm build used to take 10 seconds, now it takes less than a second. Pretty much. Wow, that's got to save developers a ton of time. Think of all the extra minutes or even hours they can get back each week. For sure. And when developers have more time, it means they can work faster, get feedback quicker, right. and ultimately deliver high-quality apps to users faster, too. Okay, this is really impressive. They've made the architecture super fast, revamped the debugging experience, and now they've made builds lightning fast. Is there anything else they squeezed into this release? Of course. How about some cool new features for creating those sleek, visually appealing interfaces? You know, the kind that users love. React Native 0.76 introduces two new style props that web developers might find familiar, box shadow and filter. Wait a minute, are these the same box shadow and filter we use on the web? Yep, that's right. This makes it even easier for web developers to start building React Native apps. They can bring all their existing knowledge and skills with them. That's so cool. Plus, you can use the awesome documentation for these properties on MDN which is a popular resource for web development. Awesome. So with Box Shadow, we can add those subtle, or not so subtle, I guess, shadows to elements to give them depth and dimension, right? I love using those to make things pop on the web. You got it. You can control the offset, blur, spread, and color of the shadow. It's like having Photoshop built right into React Native. Wow. And what about filter? What can we do with that? Think Instagram filters. Yeah. But for your entire app. You can apply effects like blur, saturation, brightness, contrast, even drop shadows. Imagine creating those trendy blurred background effects right within your React Native app, all without needing any external image editing tools. That's really cool. These new style props open up a whole new world of design possibilities. React Native apps are about to get even more visually stunning, but you know what they say, with great power comes. Striking changes. You got it. Every major release has them and 0.76 is no exception. 
So let's talk about what developers need to be aware of to avoid any surprises. Okay, so one of the most significant changes, and this is part of a bigger shift in how they're thinking about React Native, yeah. is the removal of the at React Native community client dependency. They're making React Native more framework agnostic. Hold on, framework agnostic? What does that even mean? Basically, it means that React Native at its core isn't tied to any specific way of setting up or managing your project. This gives developers more flexibility to use the tools and workflows that work best for them. Ah, okay, I see. So it's like giving developers a set of building blocks and letting them decide how to put them together instead of giving them a strict blueprint. Exactly. So what this means in practice is that if you are relying on certain command line tools provided by that community CLI, you'll now need to add those dependencies to your project yourself. It might seem like an extra step, but it actually gives you more control over your development environment. Okay, that makes sense. What other breaking changes are there? Another important one is the merging of many native libraries into one library called libraryactnative.so. Um, okay, that sounds pretty technical. What does that mean for someone who just wants their app to work? Imagine packing all your tools into one neat toolbox instead of having them scattered all over the place. That's basically what they've done here. And the result is smaller app sizes and faster startup times, especially on Android. We're talking a reduction of about 3.8 mil B. Wow, 3.8 mil might not sound like a lot, but every little bit helps, especially for users who don't have a lot of storage space or have slow internet connections. So this change is good news for developers and users. Exactly. It's all about making the user experience as good as possible. But it is worth mentioning that this change does require some adjustments for both app and library developers. But don't worry. The React Native team has provided clear instructions and upgrade helpers to make the transition as smooth as possible. Okay, sounds like they've thought this through. Any other breaking changes we should mention before we move on? Hmm, let me think. Well, there's a change in how looping animations work with React, making them more efficient and less resource intensive. And there are some platform-specific tweaks for Android and iOS developers mm -hmm. related to how view backgrounds are handled on Android and a change to turbo modules on iOS. Whoa, 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 slow down for a second. Turbo modules, what are those? Turbo modules are basically a way to make the communication between the JavaScript code you write and the native code that runs on the device smoother. Okay, so it's another one of those behind the scenes improvements that makes things run smoother. Exactly. The specific change here is a little technical, but if you're an iOS developer using turbo modules, yeah. you might need to adjust how you link certain modules in your project. Again, the React Native team has provided detailed instructions on how to do this. Got it. So the main thing to remember is that breaking changes, while sometimes a bit annoying, are often necessary to make big improvements. Exactly. They clear the way for new features, better performance, and a more robust platform overall. It's like renovating a house. You might have to deal with some dust and mess in the short term, but in the end, you get a more beautiful and functional living space. I like that analogy. Well, I think we've covered a lot already. It's pretty clear that React Native 0.76 is a huge release, full of features and improvements that will shape the future of mobile development. What's next on our deep dive? We've still got a lot to talk about, from some of the more subtle adjustments that developers will want to know about to some bigger thoughts on what this release means for the future of React Native and mobile development as a whole. Stay tuned. Welcome back, everyone. Before we get too caught up in all the shiny new features, uh, let's dig a little deeper into some of the uh, more subtle changes developers might run into in React Native 0.76. Yeah, good point. Because even small changes can sometimes have a big impact, especially when you're working with something as complex as React Native. Exactly. For example, there's a change in how looping animations interact with React. Before, these animations would constantly send updates to React. Yeah. Even if nothing was visually changing on the screen. So it was like, ugh. A hamster on a wheel, running and running, but not actually going anywhere. Uh-huh. Yeah, perfect analogy. And this was causing unnecessary re-rendering, which could slow things down. Ah, I see. So it was kind of like a hidden inefficiency that most users wouldn't really notice, but it could still impact performance behind the scenes. Right. Now, with 0.76, looping animations are smarter. They only send updates to React when something actually changes visually. So no more unnecessary re-renders. So it's like they optimize the hamster wheel to only spin when it actually needs to. Exactly. Saves energy and makes things run smoother. Another area with some under-the-hood tweaks is the text engine. They made a change to always use attributed string box instead of attributed string in the text layout manager. Okay, now you're losing me a bit with all the technical terms. What does that mean for someone who's not a coder? Sure, sure. Basically, this change is all about how text is handled within React Native. 
Think of it like upgrading from a simple text editor to a really powerful word processor. Okay, I think I'm starting to get it. So instead of just plain text, it's more like having a rich text editor where you can control all the formatting and layout options. Exactly. You now have more control over font styles, character spacing, line heights, mm -hmm. even special characters and emojis. It's all about giving developers more precise control over how text looks in their apps. So while users might not see it directly, it gives developers more tools to create visually appealing and engaging text experiences. Right. Okay, now let's talk about some platform-specific changes. Android developers, listen up. There's a change in how view backgrounds are handled. Oh yeah, platform-specific changes are always important. Definitely. Before, view backgrounds in Android were tied to specific drawable classes. Um, hold on a sec. Drawable classes, can you explain yeah. that a bit more? Sure, think of drawables as the building blocks for how things look on the screen in Android. They define things like colors, shapes, images, and all that. Okay, so they're like the visual ingredients that make up the user interface. Yep, exactly. This change basically detaches view backgrounds from those specific drawable classes, hmm. making the system more flexible. Ah, so it's like giving developers more choices. They can decide how they want to create and style backgrounds without being limited to specific options. Precisely. Now, for iOS developers, there is a change related to turbo modules. Turbo modules, those sound familiar. Can you remind us what they are again and why they're important? Of course. Turbo modules are basically a way to improve how the JavaScript code in React Native talks to the native code that runs on iOS devices. They make things faster and more efficient. Right, right. Like a super highway between the JavaScript world and the native iOS world. Exactly. And the change here is that they removed a macro that was used for automatically linking certain modules. Okay, that sounds pretty technical. What does that mean for iOS developers? It means that they might need to make a small change in their project setup if they were relying on that automatic linking behavior. It's a small tweak, but it's something to be aware of. And of course, the React Native team has provided clear instructions on how to handle it. Got it. So as with all breaking changes, it's important to carefully read the release notes and make sure you update your code accordingly. For sure. But beyond all the specific technical details, what's really exciting about this release is the overall direction it sets for React Native. We're seeing a big focus on performance, making things easier for developers, and aligning more closely with web standards. Yeah, that alignment with web standards is interesting. Earlier, we talked about how the new box shadow and filter style props came directly from the web. Does this mean we'll see even more web concepts coming to React Native? It's definitely possible. That kind of crossover can be really beneficial for developers. It makes it easier to share knowledge and skills between web and mobile development. Right. It's like breaking down the walls between those two worlds. Exactly. And this trend towards bringing web and mobile closer together raises an interesting question. How will these advancements in React Native impact other mobile development frameworks? Will we see a greater focus on performance, web compatibility, and developer-friendly tools across the board. It's something to think about as we see the world of mobile app development continue to evolve. It really is. It makes you wonder what other cool innovations are coming up in the world of mobile development, especially if React Native is pushing the boundaries like this. It's a really exciting time to be a mobile developer. Totally agree. Okay, before we move on, there's one last important change we need to talk about. Oh, right. The Updates to the minimum iOS and Android SDK requirements. This was actually announced a while back, but it's worth mentioning again because it affects which devices your app can run on. Okay, so for iOS, the minimum requirement is now iOS 15.1, up from iOS 13.4. And for Android, it's SDK 24, which is Android 7, up from SDK 23. What does this mean for developers and users? Well, it means that older devices running operating systems below those minimums won't be able to run apps built with React Native 0.76 or later. So if you're still using an iPhone 6 or a really old Android phone, you might need to upgrade if you want to use the latest React Native apps. Yeah, that's right. It might seem like a disadvantage, but it's actually important because it allows React Native to take advantage of newer features in the latest operating systems, which ultimately leads to better apps for most users. I see. So it's about finding that balance between supporting older devices and making the most of the latest technology. Exactly. And it's a decision that benefits the entire React Native ecosystem in the long run. Okay, cool. I think we've thoroughly covered all the ins and outs of React Native 0.76. What's next on our deep dive agenda? Let's take a step back and look at the bigger picture. What does this release tell us about the future of React Native? And how might these changes impact the broader mobile development landscape? 
Stick around for our final thoughts. And we're back for the final part of our deep dive into React Native 0.76. We've explored a ton of stuff, from the big changes like the new architecture to the smaller but still important breaking changes. Yeah, it's been a pretty in-depth journey, unpacking all the little details and cool features of this release. Totally. So now let's zoom out a bit and think about the big picture. What does all this mean for the future of React Native and maybe even for mobile development in general? I think this release makes one thing really clear. React Native is all about performance, sure. stability, and giving developers a smoother and more intuitive experience. They're setting the stage for a platform that can handle, yeah. you know, the increasing complexity of modern mobile apps. And it feels like they're really trying to make React Native a bridge between web and mobile development, like with those new style props, box shadow and filter, web developers can just jump right in and start building. Yeah, for sure. And that connection between web and mobile development is a big win for everyone. Developers can use the skills they already have, and it's easier for new people to get started. In the end, I think it's gonna lead to a more exciting and innovative ecosystem. And speaking of innovation, we can't forget about those new React Native dev tools. Oh yeah, those are a game changer for sure. Not just a visual refresh, but a whole new way to debug and understand React Native apps. Yeah. The way they're integrated with Chrome dev tools, how much more reliable they are, and the potential for even more amazing features in the future. It's all super exciting. So to all the mobile developers out there listening, whether you're already using React Native or thinking about trying it, this release is definitely worth checking out. It shows that React Native is here to stay, and it's only getting better. And if we take a step back and look at the broader impact, it makes you wonder, right, how will all these advancements in React Native affect other mobile development frameworks? Will we see more emphasis on performance, web compatibility, and developer-friendly tools across the board? Only time will tell. But it's going to be really interesting to see how things unfold. It really makes you think. If React Native is pushing the boundaries this much, what other incredible innovations are just around the corner in the world of mobile development? Well, that's what's so cool about technology. It's always changing, challenging us to think differently mm. and explore new possibilities. React Native 0.76 is a perfect example of that. Couldn't have said it better myself. And remember, we've only scratched the surface of what this release has to offer. I encourage you to dig deeper into the source material, explore all those technical details, and find those hidden gems we didn't have time to cover today. Yeah, and don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. Experiment and push the limits of what you can do with React Native. You never know. You might just discover the next big thing in mobile development. Well, that's all the time we have for our deep dive into React Native 0.76. I hope you enjoyed coming along for the ride. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep building awesome things. I 